Good afternoon. So, <clears throat> marketplaces and uh, how do we think, make things? Basically what is happening is that uh, we all are redefining product creation, how things get made. And um, I think this is such a profound thing that uh, it, it, it begs to be repeated and to think about it a little bit. Because what is happening with 3D printers, the things that we love a lot, is that um, 3D printers are actually bridging the gap between the digital world in which we are creating so much beautiful things and the real world in which we live. Basically what is happening is that 3D printers are digitizing manufacturing. And as a result of that, everything we know about making products will change. Who is making products? These used to be huge companies. Um, that needed to be huge companies because the capital required, all the risk that needed to be taken, uh, the research that was needed to bring products to market. You, needed to, you need a big company for that. And in the old fashioned way, that is how it's done. But with 3D printing and with the maker movement, that is completely changing. It's now individuals who come up with products and they can bring them to the market. It changes what is being made. Because those big companies can only afford using their processes to make products that will sell in the hundreds of thousands or millions. They're the way they are constructed, the way they are built, they need to sell so many of the same products because with mass manufacturing, that's the only way you can make money. With 3D printing, that's completely changed. Actually, a single product can be profitable. How it's being made? No longer in centralized huge factories, but at home or uh, on platforms in the cloud, like Shapeways. And then the unit economics completely changed from um, the millions to the single units. And then last but not least, the time to market. It doesn't take years anymore, it doesn't take months anymore. You can bring a product to market in days. And actually we saw that recently again, which was kind of cool. Uh, during the Super Bowl halftime, Katy Perry was performing with Left Shark and Right Shark, and the day after, those two cute little fi figurines were on, on Shapeways. People already had found a way to make them and actually also sell them. So giving you a cool example of the time to market imploding from months to one day. And as a result, you know, you can summarize that how 3D printing is redefining product creation. It really is changing everything we know and take for granted about products, physical products. You know, no more companies, it goes to individuals. No more mass markets, but the infinite or the long tail of products. No more controlled, but a networked environment. No longer centralized, but localized. Production will be local again. And no more months, but hours. So how does it work? Well, today already, hundreds of thousands of people are using Shapeways. Uh, millions of people are doing already exactly what in the future will be common. In the future, anyone will be able to make their own products and customize them and get exactly what they want. So how does that work today? Well, you can design products in a digital way. Luckily, the 3D design software has become free. Blender it was one of the first, but now you have Tinkercad, you have SketchUp. There are many other tools that enable people not only to design, but also to learn how to design. It's a fundamental thing that is really important because when the tools are free, trying is free and also failing becomes free and that's really important. And as a result, we see a lot of kids getting very, very excited about creating new things. We're making hundreds of thousands of products this way a month at this moment, but in the future there will be millions and millions of products. Uh, the need for complicated 3D software will slowly but surely go away. Already, um, the, you know, people are using Minecraft to create products. You know, using a game to create content that in the end turns out to be a toy or ends up to be something functional. And we're in the, currently with the high-end 3D printers, there is a need for more centralized approach, which actually then sounds old school. Over time, this will be a network, a network of, uh, of manufacturing. And the lead time, because of new technology, um, the lead time of getting products from ordering to in your hands. If you use your own printer, that's already ours, but those machines will get faster. And if you use services like ours, those, uh, those times will come down as well. We already have rush hour Rush, rush orders um, that we can uh, ship in two days. And as a result, on our marketplace, we see a rapid growth of products. We now have over 3.6 million products that people have uploaded and have made. And we're getting another 150 to 200,000 every month. 
But what is really cool to realize around that, come on, is that 50% of the people who are creating products on Shapeways didn't go to school, didn't study design, um, or didn't ha had to take courses how to do this, but actually they taught themselves. I think that's the power of communities as well, that people uh, share the knowledge. I used to work for Blender, and one of the things that we did is we published free 3D software, but there was no manual, there were no tutorials, and the user interface was kind of challenging. Maybe there are some of you here uh, that have used or tried to use Blender. Uh, the earliest versions were really hard. So what I saw happening on our site, on the forum, is that people started to share the knowledge. And that's also why I'm a very uh, strong fan of the fact that we have a strong community around Shapeways, because the technology of 3D printing, the technology to make physical products, isn't easy to comprehend at this point. And communities, people who work together, can learn that much, much faster. And as a result of that, we see our community, we see the number of people who are creating products grow very fast, over 100% every year, of new people that are creating new content. And that really shows that there is something going on there, with hundreds of thousands of people already doing it today, that keeps growing at 100% a year, you can see this goes into the millions pretty fast. And that, to me, really shows that there is a deep desire, a deep need for people to be involved in the products they make. Whether it's for a hobby project, whether it's for, for a problem that you have, you need to repair something, whether you want to start your own business, uh, and whether that is in jewelry or in home decor or in games, it doesn't matter. Slowly but surely, everybody gets access to this technology. Manufacturing truly gets democratized. And as a result, we see in many, many categories, we see products appear. You know, whether it's jewelry or scale models, Hero Forge uh, uh, is a great example of that, industrial parts, uh, gaming pop uh, culture, um, art, tech gadgets, anything you can think of uh, is being made. Even clothing is starting to be, uh, be made with 3D printers. And I think we're still in the early, early days. Although Shapeways um, is turning seven this July, I think we haven't seen anything yet. Um, and also the 3D printing technology exists over 25 years. I don't think we've seen anything yet. We're still in the early stages. Because it's, there is a physical component to all of this, it takes more time than for, uh, for software revolution. This takes a little bit longer. But it will happen. We see it happening every day. To give you some ideas on the successes, you know, in the three big categories on Shapeways, uh, in jewelry, in home decor, and in, in, in games, we see quite a big number of products sold by single shop owners. So if you talk about how successful can people become when they open stores, start to br uh, make their own products and actually sell them, well, if you think about nervous systems, who are a long-time user on Shapeways, they sold over 22,500 products. Michiel Cornelius, who makes home decor, over 6,500. And our top selling in number of items uh, Shop owner Ceramic Wombat is selling Dungeons and Dragon dice, sold over 38,500 of them. When I started Shapeways, if you would have told me that people would make Dungeons and Dragon dice in the tens of thousands, I wouldn't have believed it. But there you go. Uh, or maybe I should have believed it, because uh, everybody I talk to about this say, yeah, yeah, I, I used to play that. So there is, a, there is a, a large following still. So just, you know, you see what is happening is that no longer big companies, but individuals. And those individuals make things for themselves, but they also can start businesses. And as a result, the whole dynamic of the market changes. So what I want to talk about as a last point before um, I'm happy to take some questions from the audience is something I'm really, really passionate about. Because Shapeways first opened the door to take things from the, phys from the digital to the physical domain, 3D print stuff. But what do you make? Well, things you design with 3D software. And if you don't know how to use 3D software, you can buy products that other people have designed, or you work together with a designer. OK. But what if you want to customize stuff? What if you have an idea? What if you get inspired by the products that are already on Shapeways or on another uh, marketplace, and you don't know how to adapt it? Or you just want to put your name on it or a picture on it? Wouldn't it be great if we can make that easy? And that's why we created Shape.js that we've launched, soft launched uh, in the latter part of last year, and we're optimizing, uh, working together with Target, actually, to, uh, to make this better and better. And Shape.js basically is uh, based on the JavaScript programming language that hopefully lots and lots of people here already know. 
And we built a long and uh, extensive library. So using JavaScript, you can now start to create experiences and modify existing products. Um, so for example, uh, you want to make a ring. We have a function for that. You just describe how big the ring should be, what the diameter should be, what the thickness should be. And those three parameters with the function create ring create you a ring. Um, if you want to then add text, you can, you can add uh, a function add text to it where you describe where on the ring you want to have the text. And then in the function, you can give the string that describes the text right to the, to the product. Or because JavaScript nicely integrates with the web, you can add that to your product page on Shapeways. You can create an input form where your user, where the users of your product or the buyers of your product can type in their text, maybe their name or the name of someone they care about. And then all of a sudden, the product gets changed in real time. And I think that is the next step. And actually, then we're coming full circle, where we started with making it possible to, to take products from the digital world and put them into the physical. Now we're also helping people to customize existing products. And I'm really excited about that, because I think it fills the gap between, on the one end, the makers who know how to use 3D software, and people who want to solve a problem or want to add, adapt or modify existing products. So let me show you how it works. So this is an early stage prototype. But uh, let's say, for example, you've created a coffee cup, and you want to make this customizable. On the left-hand side, you actually see the JavaScript code. It's about 200 lines of code. And now the user can select an image from his own library and click on the object, in this case the cup, and presto, um, this, uh, this item is now embossed or engraved on top of the existing product in 3D. And this is actually printable content. You can do this on multiple places. So let's do two. And as you can already see, there is HTML front end for this, where people can click to upload the images. They can click uh, for a specification of the, uh, where they want to have it. And then actually on the bottom, you'll see there is a slider that enables people to, uh, to specify whether they want to have it embossed or engraved and how much so. And this is just an early prototype. But of course, with JavaScript, you can make this, uh, uh, this experience just like you want it. This is another uh, example, the Bathsheba uh, Grossman Klein bottle bottle opener that she sold many of on Shapeways. And actually, there is a customizable version that is now customized by hand. So to, ex to show you how easy it becomes now to make this a custom item, we created the code. And by just clicking on the item and typing in the text, you now have a custom bottle opener. So this is where design meets software development. Uh, you can imagine that all of a sudden, any object, any product uh, that is created can be customizable. And I think that really uh, plays into the hands, plays into the strength of 3D printing. Because 3D printing thousands of the same products can be a lot of fun because they're great products. But in the end, mass manufacturing is, is there to make that happen. 3D printing is uniquely positioned to make unique products come to life. Uh, without uh, the added hassle uh, that you would have with mass manufacturing. And that's why I think that tools like uh, Shape.js uh, can be really, really powerful. And I can't wait uh, to see what happens when we unleash this on our community. That's what I wanted to share today. Thank you so much. <laughs> Questions? What new materials do we have? What new materials do we have? Um, quite a few. Um, we recently announced that we have an ultra-high definition plastic. Um, we launched that uh, a few weeks ago, which is even higher than our FUD material. It's based uh, on the project series from 3D Systems. Uh, we're still, and I think that is one of the, the coolest uh, things that is happening, is we're working on our ceramics process. We decided uh, that the ceramics processes out there weren't good enough. So we currently have a pilot going for makers, for makers only. So we don't offer that to our, um, to our commercial marketplace to uh, have your own products made in ceramic based on a process that we developed in-house. And the ceramic that you get out of that is comparable to, to porcelain that you buy in traditional stores. It's dishwasher safe. It's food safe. 
and um, it's really uh, quite strong. Um, of course, if you drop it from sufficient height, it will break. But uh, it is just as strong as uh, the porcelain that you would buy in a regular store. So you can put it in a dishwasher, hot water, cold water, it doesn't make any difference. And uh, we're scaling that pilot, uh, and hopefully in the next couple of months, hopefully before the summer, we can open that up for, the, for our whole community uh, and then see what people are going to make with that. And then we added a lot of materials in, the, in metals um, over the last couple of months, and there are more to come. Um, we're actually going to dedicate a part of our site to it, a pilot uh, part of Shapeways Pilots, where you can see all the new technologies on software, but also on materials uh, emerge, and then you can subscribe to those pilots. Yep. Any other questions? Sure. Uh, can you parameterize the shape of the object with JavaScript? Say it again, sorry? Can you change the shape like with the JavaScript? Yes. Yeah, these were just uh, two simple examples where there's really basic customization. But uh, Alan Hudson, who is the, the architect of this software, um, he built a, a signet ring uh, where you can have the logo of your company or fraternity on top of it. And he built it completely from scratch. So you can basically uh, describe in a procedural way uh, shapes. And then you can give the users as much control over how those shapes look like as you want, whether it's uh, one shape or many shapes. Uh, so you can even do morphing. Yeah. I'm slowly running out of time, so one more question. All right. Seems we're, we're out of time. No more questions? Very good. Thank you very much, Peter. My pleasure.